Everyone hates medications. I get it, I kinda do too. When we have rheumatoid arthritis, we can find ourselves taking more medications than we'd ever dream we'd be on. And it's only natural to think, is this it? Is this my life forever? Rheumatoid arthritis is a chronic condition for which there is no cure. But that doesn't mean that the medications you're currently on have to be forever. I wanna talk about how you can decrease, and dare I say, come off your medications. By the end of this video, you'll know when you should consider tapering, how to prioritize which medications to target first, and how to do it all safely. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Ortiz, and this is Connected Rheumatology. Let's get started. When you first get diagnosed with RA, your treatment plan can feel like a cornucopia of meds. I get overwhelmed by this too. There are the short-term meds, the long-term meds, the meds that prevent bone loss and heart disease, and the meds that treat the side effects of the other meds. It's a lot. We do this because in the last 30 years, we now better understand the importance of getting RA inflammation as controlled as possible, as quickly as possible, in order to prevent long-term joint damage. So the first few appointments, it can feel like all we are doing is adding, adding, adding more meds. And it feels this way because it is this way. But now, after close to 30 years of experience treating rheumatoid arthritis and, by the way, having pretty good success at preventing long-term damage, we, meaning the doctors and the powers that be societies, are thinking about what every patient has been asking. Do people really need to be on all of this forever? And the answer, no, not everyone. And why is it different for each person? Well, right now, our understanding as to why some people can come off or tolerate lower doses of medications has to do with the medication's pharmacokinetics and their individual rheumatoid arthritis. And this is just a fancy way of saying the interaction between a drug's chemistry and your biology is going to differ from person to person. So there is no formula. There is no one-size-fits-all approach to this, which is why each of us needs a strategy. Let's start with when you should start thinking about all of this. Well, generally speaking, the recommendation is to wait until your rheumatoid arthritis is in remission or as close to it as possible. It's said that one should wait until they've reached this state for at least six months, but personally, I don't think that's long enough. So, okay, stay with me, here's how I see it. By the time many get to my office, they've had inflammation for longer than many of us realize. We all know it can take forever to get into the right doctor's office and get the right diagnosis, and that's the time that we know there's inflammation. There is also an undefined amount of time before symptoms even start, the preclinical time, where there is immune system dysregulation and inflammation that isn't causing enough problems to lead anyone to the doctor, but is still having consequences on the body. In my experience, rushing the process and not giving the body enough time in remission before taking away the medications that helped rebalance the immune system can set us up for a roller coaster of flares and remissions that one, is no fun, and two, can cause damage to the body. So it's for this reason, I will usually recommend that we hold on any big medication changes until someone has been good and quiet for at least a year. This is usually a welcome respite for those with RA who have been living with the unpredictability of joint pain and inflammation. You deserve to have some stable, quiet time before we potentially rock the boat with medication changes. It also gives people some time and energy to focus on building an anti-inflammatory lifestyle that's going to support them as they try to taper meds in the future. We all know making lifestyle changes and building new habits is hard and it takes time. 
taking the time in remission to add anti-inflammatory foods and cut back on processed foods, work on sleep to ensure you're getting seven to nine restful hours per night and incorporate some regular movement into your routine will set yourself up for success when the time comes to decrease your medications. So let's say you're there. You've been doing well for years now and you want to know the next step. Well, you wanna take a look at all your medications and decide which one to tackle first. Now, if you are only on one medicine, you are in the minority as most people need a combination of medications, so your choice is obvious. But if you are like most people with rheumatoid arthritis, you likely have a few different medications to choose from. One of those meds may be a biologic, and the question of coming off medications always seems to come up when a person is facing a biologic medicine for RA. I did a video about what to think about when starting the biologic and what questions to ask your doctor when having these discussions, and I recommend watching that video next if you are either on or may one day be on a biologic, and the link will be in the description box. Whether you are on a biologic or not, to know which meant to focus on, you need to have a solid understanding of what you were on and why you were on it. Is this a medication used to regulate the immune system or is it for prevention of something? What symptom was this medication supposed to help and has it helped? Are you putting up with any side effects from this medication? Once you're comfortable with the facts of each med you're on, think about your experience with each one. Do you frequently forget to take it? Are you comfortable with injections or do you dread them? How good are you at getting your refills? And finally, how much are these medications costing you? Some of the RA medications can be quite expensive and this should definitely be taken into account. Also, how easy is it to get the medicine? I don't need to remind anyone how much room for improvement there is in the current U.S. healthcare insurance environment, and it can sometimes be a headache to get certain medications. These are all factors you should consider when coming up with your priorities regarding which medication you'd like to come up first. And finally, you know this is a joint decision, so you are going to want to talk it over with your doctor. They will likely also have an opinion that's informed by their understanding of your RA based on how your joints and your blood tests look and their experience with other patients. And I recommend having this discussion sooner rather than later, even before you are ready to start tapering. It will make it that much smoother when the time comes. Okay, so it is now time and you and your doctor have agreed which medicine you are going after first. How do you actually do it? Well, there are two rules. First, we don't talk about Fight Club. Oh wait, that's not right. First, we do one medication at a time. We won't know what's what if we start making changes to that med and then stopping this one. We only change one medicine at a time and then track how we're doing. And second, we don't go cold turkey. The biggest risk when making any changes once you've reached remission is that you'll flare and will lose control of your RA. And going cold turkey on any medication that is controlling your rheumatoid arthritis is the best way to ensure a flare. Now, even with the most methodical taper, flares can still happen. So it's about judging the severity of the flare and trying to manage them with short courses of NSAIDs or prednisone. In some cases, we need to backtrack and go back to the previous regimen that was working. And in worst case scenarios, that previous regimen doesn't work anymore and now we really are back at square one. Now, thankfully, worst case scenarios aren't common when we take a strategic and conservative approach, but I have definitely been there when someone has gone cold turkey. The methodical, conservative approach is to either decrease the dose of the medication or the frequency in which you take it. So if the medication is daily, you can spread it out to every other day. If it's weekly, you can take it every two weeks. If a dose requires eight tablets, you might consider decreasing to six. You do this for an agreed amount of time and you schedule check-ins with your doctor. They don't necessarily need to be a full appointment. Perhaps it's just a phone call, a telehealth visit, or a portal message. 
but you let them know how you are doing and see if you can take the next step of either decreasing the dose or spreading it out even more. We are always wanting to get away with as little medication as possible while still controlling the autoimmune inflammation of rheumatoid arthritis. Despite the amazing achievements, we still have a huge blind spot and don't have a great way of personalizing treatment doses based on someone's biology. We do understand better, however, that there are differences that will allow someone to either take lower doses or get off medications completely and that following an anti-inflammatory lifestyle as best as you can is going to give you the best shot to do this successfully. I recommend checking out my video on starting biologic medications next, and that link will be in the description box. Thanks so much for watching. I aim to provide you with the autoimmune and rheumatic information you need so that you can make the best health decisions for you. If that sounds up your alley, go ahead and like this video and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.